My name's Pete Fairley and I'm a radiologist at the Royal Derby Hospital. There are many benefits to CT scanning. It can give you a timely diagnosis for patients who are critically ill, allowing urgent surgery or urgent treatments. It means we don't do unnecessary procedures, so we don't do negative lap laparotomies, we don't send patients to theatre unnecessarily, which is really important. We can also remove uncertainty for patients and clinicians, and that's great because it can reassure patients who might be very worried about a certain diagnosis and can help clinicians make decisions on discharging patients, freeing up beds and that kind of thing. CT scans involve exposing patients to ionising radiation. Now that's not a good thing and we know that high doses of ionising radiation are harmful to health. The exact risk from a CT scan is really difficult to work out because most of the data we have has been extrapolated from results from studying people who have been victims of nuclear bombs and the doses we're looking at are much, much lower than that. So there is a large amount of uncertainty but there is likely to be a small but actual risk to the patient which increases with the number of exposures and so lots of other factors such as the patient's age, the patient's sex, the patient's weight and that kind of thing. Awareness amongst doctors is, is not good. We recently uh, surveyed doctors at the Royal Derby Hospital and there were large proportions of doctors who either weren't aware that radiation was a risk or significantly underestimated the risk of the radiation exposure. Also some clinicians are not certain of which modalities involve ionising radiation and which modalities don't involve ionising radiation. The awareness of the consequences of exposure to ionising radiation is important because in the longer term this can lead to patients developing malignancies potentially and uh, years down the line. Also there is a risk if we use CT scanning indiscriminately that we pick up lots of incidental findings that would never harm the patient, are irrelevant to their health but lead to other costly and unpleasant investigations sometimes and a lot of worry and psychological morbidity for the patient that's not without its cost. We know that younger patients are more sensitive to ionising radiation and have got longer to develop malignancies. They're, they're going to live longer, potentially, and their, their tissue is more sensitive. Also, certain tissues, such as breast tissue and thyroid tissue, is sensitive to radiation uh, more than others, um, and female patients as well. As you can see, when we examined the rate of CT scan use amongst patients at Royal Derby Hospital, there was a rapid increase from the age of 15 to the age of 19 where there was almost a trebling of the use of CT. This isn't really likely to be due to changes in pathology but more due to clinician behaviour with adult physicians much more readily reaching for a CT request form. This is important because these patients are still young and therefore are relatively susceptible to the effects of radiation compared to an older population. So the paediatricians use lots of different imaging techniques when investigating their patients. They tend to use a lot of ultrasound, which doesn't involve ionising radiation. There are reasons for this. Technically, it is easier to do ultrasounds on paediatric patients because they're thinner, therefore the images are easier to interpret. And cross-sectional imaging is generally less helpful in patients with less intra-abdominal fat because the images are harder to interpret. However, I'm sure there are imaging strategies that the paediatricians have that the adult physicians could learn from. My name is Dr Richard Bowker. I'm a consultant paediatrician here at the Royal Derby Hospital. I've worked here for 10 years. With any test on a child, I have to consider what benefits I'm going to get from the result of that test versus the harms I'm going to create in putting that child through that test. Some tests you might not think of as invasive, such as a blood test, but actually to a toddler, that is quite psychologically damaging. When it comes to radiation, that is clearly an invasive test for a child whose lifelong dose of radiation is going to be significantly changed by the fact of doing a, a CT scan. Therefore, if I'm going to put a child through a CT scan, I need to be clear in my own mind that the information I'm going to get from that test is going to benefit the management of that child. I probably had some training in radiation dose at medical school, but more importantly, talking to consultant radiologists and paediatric radiologists is where I get most of my knowledge from. 
I know that when I put a baby through a CT scan for a head scan, it's equivalent to about 18 months of background radiation. When I consider a CT scan for a diagnostic test, I need to know, am I going to get the information from that test that is going to help me manage the case? First of all, I would ask my radiology colleague, is this the right test? Am I asking the right question or getting the right answer from this test? If the answer is that it can be achieved through something less invasive, such as an ultrasound scan or a plain x-ray, then that's really helpful to have had that conversation. Next, I would weigh up whether I really needed to know the information in the first place or could just watch and wait be another appropriate way of managing the patient. Finally, if I'm going to undertake an invasive procedure, I'd probably involve the parents and the young person in that discussion. They have an understanding of risk, just as I do, and involving them and getting consent from them is important in my mind. I know that adult care has hugely different challenges compared to paediatric medicine, but here's a strategy that can cross the specialties. When considering a test, just stop and think, what information are you trying to get? What positive benefits will you have from doing an invasive test in terms of needing management further forward? Have you discussed the risks with the patient? Have you discussed the information that you'll gain from the person interpreting the test, such as the radiologist? Is there a way of getting the same information in a less invasive manner? Of course, there's a risk in not imaging a patient because an important diagnosis could be missed. And sometimes patients who are very anxious may prefer the certainty of the CT scan result, regardless of any radiation involved. These are complex issues. Therefore, as a clinician, it's important to understand the risks and benefits of performing investigations on your patients and to be aware of the different options available to you.